Shalom, giving all praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Brakatham, to the hopefully elect. Um, I mean, this is just a real quick man, um, because one thing that the Lord um, requires out of us, each and every one of us, man, is our faith. All right, and um, you know, being that we're coming into this hour of temptation. All right, um. The, 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 the biggest, the, the test, man, the final test, you know, um, we're all getting ready to face. And, you know, um, I had mentioned this in the, the street teaching. I just came from the street teaching. Um, um, and I, I, I remember, because a lot of times, you know, um, when brothers go out there, I'm sure brothers can attest when brothers go out there, um, out there on the highways and the byways and, and, and when brothers do shows and things of that nature, it's really the spirit that's speaking, you know. So a lot of times, I know for myself, like I said, I'm sure other brothers can attest. Um, a lot of times, kind of forget, you know, what the topic was. You know, we may forget what we even spoke about because, again, it's it's, it's the spirit that that kind of takes over, and you know, from there, you know, it, it's a wrap, you know. But um, you know, sometimes there are things that you know we may remember and. I remember one of the things that I mentioned in the street teaching. Um, um, one of the things that I mentioned going into how, um, because basically, um, if you're doing this work, all right, if you're indulged in the ministry, if you're if you're indulged in how about Shemel Shai, he considers us friends. All right. He considers us his friends. He says, I call you not servants because servants, they don't know what the master does. But I call you friends because you do that, you know, the things that I command, roughly paraphrasing it. You know, I remember, I remember bringing that out and I had brought it out that pretty much the fact that, you know, um, Lord, hey, he's our friend. You know, he's not going to leave us out here when we were faced with this hour of temptation. All right. Um, he's not going to leave us out here to fend for ourselves. All right. And pretty much because, you know, it's as, it's, it's as simple as, hey, the Lord gave us a cheat sheet, all right? He gave us the answers to the test, you know, and we just got to follow through with it, you know? Um, so, hey, amen, it's that, it's that simple to where, hey, the Lord, he gave us the cheat sheet to the test. Because, again, we're coming into um, uh, 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 this hour of temptation to where, hey, we're all going to be tested, but again, we've been given the answers. We've been given a cheat sheet. And all we got to do is revert back to it. And one of the answers on that cheat sheet on how to overcome, you know, when that time does come, is faith. You know, because, um, hey, that's one thing. The Heavenly Father, uh, that's a big requirement. The Heavenly Father, he expects our faith. All right. He, he's uh, uh, in our daily walk. The Lord looks at how, you know, in whatever situation may come up. Um, the Lord is paying attention to how we deal with it, you know, because um, I want to go through this, man, real quick. Uh, I don't know how much time I got, because like I said, I just got out the street teaching. So I don't know how much space I got. So I'm going to try to go through this as quick as I can. But as usual, man, hey, because, you know, the Bible is filled with many examples that we can learn from, Bibles that we can take from. All right. Examples that we can take from as you read Romans 15 and uh, 4. All right, the things are written for time, written for our learning, right? And one of those things that we can learn from, those examples that we can take from, is our forefather Abraham, who displayed great faith, all right? Um, and again, understanding that, hey, we come from this flock. This is this is our forefather. This is one of our patriarchs, all right? You know, so this is where we, we, this is where we come from. So, you know, it shouldn't be no different, you know, when we're, when the Lord, when we're putting adverse situations, all right, hey, do what the men of old did, all right, they put their faith in Yahweh Bashim Abishai, even in certain death, all right, so I'm going to go through this as quick as I can, because like I said, I don't know how much time I got, uh, I don't know how much space I got, so in Genesis, the 22nd chapter, I'm going to start at verse 1, it says, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. So you see the Lord said that um, the, 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 the Lord tempted Abraham. So you see what the Lord was about to put Abraham through. Um, 
Abraham didn't know it was a test. You know, he just because Abraham, Abraham was a great man of faith. And also Abraham was one of those examples because Abraham, he's known as a friend of Yahweh Shem El Shai. He's a friend of Yahweh Shem El Shai. So you see, like I said earlier, you know, the Lord didn't call his servants. You know, we're considered friends, you know. Um. So verse two again, uh, verse two says, and it said, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him up for a burnt, offer him therefore a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell of thee, which I will tell thee of. Because if you know and understand when it came to Isaac, man, um, that was, that was a man, you know, that was, that was the, the, the firstborn man, the, the, you know, the pride and joy right there, you know? So, I mean, you can just imagine what Abraham, um, when the, he was told to, to offer up his only begotten son, all right, who he loves dearly, him and Sarah, they love this, they love this boy, man, you know, they're, they're, like I said, their pride and joy, but here the Lord told him to offer him up as an offering, a burnt offering, and you see, because when you look into a, what, uh, uh, when you go to the, the ritual of a burnt offering, man, that's not a, um, that's not a, um, you know, pleasant way to go, you know. It's a pretty gruesome death. You gotta slice, slice the animal open, and and you know drain drain the blood and, and and burn it. So basically, Abraham was told to slice his son open, his only begotten son, one that he loves to death. Um, slice him up, drain him, and, and burn him to death. You see, but hey, for whatever reason, all right, because you know that's why it's, it's better to just obey. You know. The scripture says it's better to obey rather than to, rather than to sacrifice. You know, just listen, man, because whenever the Lord says something, man, for whatever reason, all right, just know that the Lord knows what's best. He has your best in interest at heart. All right. It's like when the parent tears a child, when the parent, when the father gives a son an order, you know, because a lot of us, you know, a lot of times um, we might want to do something or whatever the case may be. And, you know, our parents may say something else. Right. And you may not understand why, but being that, you know, a lot of us are parents now, you know, understanding that when the child wants to do something um, and, you know, it's not in their best of interest. Right. The parent uh, the, the child might, you know, feel some type of way or whatever, but, you know, it's for that child's best of interest. So, you know, kind of the same concept when the Heavenly Father, when he says something, it's just best to do it. He knows what's best. All right. So just just listen, man. Cause you see, and I say all that to say Abraham, he didn't, um, or at least from what I know, he didn't, there's no account in the Bible where it talks about he, he questioned the Lord. He, he bucked up or anything like that, man. You know, hey, Abraham, he did what, what, what was committed of him. He was obedient. And then, you know, again, what Abraham was about to do, um, hey, I mean, uh, a lot of us, we can't say that we would have did the same because to offer up your son like that, man, and the gruesome death like that, I mean, like I said, you can just imagine what the thoughts that was going through Abraham, what was going through his 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 heart, man, what was going on in his mind. You can only imagine. But nevertheless, um, hey, you know, he didn't ask no questions. You know, he, he followed through. Verse 3 says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I, the lad, will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. So again, just imagine his journey as Abraham is traveling to his place. Right. You just imagine on the way there, man, what what our forefather, what he what, what's going through his mind right now, man. He's about to offer up in his his only begotten son in a, in a very gruesome way, you know, because notice how it didn't it didn't didn't um no account in the scriptures where it talks about how Abraham told his wife, you know, because, hey, she probably would have lost him and she probably probably would have, you know, God knows what she would have tried to do. You know, she would have she would have freaked the hell out, man. So notice how there's no account where Abraham he actually told Sarah that, hey, I'm about to go offer up our only begotten son as a burnt offering because the Lord told me to do it. You know. 
It says verse 6, And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they both went, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I. Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire in the wood, but where is the where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Because, you know, also in this, this is some spiritual gems, some, um, what, do they, what do they call it, Easter eggs, letting you know, giving you some some hints, some clues that this is Yahawashai, for those that have ears to hear, talking about Isaac. Isaac was Yahawashai, all right? Because, you know, one of the, the titles of the Lord is he's the, he's the lamb, you know? He was that sacrificial lamb that was offered up, right? Um, so, you know, just some spiritual hints letting you, you know, to, to let you know if you have, again, if, if, if the Lord opened your understanding to receive it, um, that this is, uh, Isaac, all right, who was also the, 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 the only begotten of Abraham, right, which, you know, Yahweh Shai, he's the only begotten of the Heavenly Father, right? Reading on it says, and he said, behold, the fire in the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? It says, and Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they both went, so they went to both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Um, so you, again, you see, there's no account telling you that Abraham, you know, he, he questioned, he was hesitant or anything. No, man, he, 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 he obeyed because again, for whatever reason, he, he, he uh, knew that, Hey, this is the will of the Lord. Hey, you know, I got to do this, you know? Um, cause Hey, at the end of the day, you got to put your trust in your house. No matter, you know, what temptation befalls you, man, no matter what comes upon you, no matter what situation arises. Cause like I said, in the first verse, the Lord tempted Abraham, but Abraham didn't know he was being tempted. He didn't know he was being tested. Right. Because, again, we got to be proven because that's one thing. Like I said, the Lord requires is our faith. We have to be proven. All right. We have to be tried out. So that's why we get put in these situations to where our taste is getting uh, our faith is getting tested. Right. And you see, we had all these pop quizzes throughout our lives, throughout our trials and tribulations. Right. They, they've all been pop quizzes. But again, we're coming into the time of the big test, the, the, the final test, the final exam. You see. And again, the Lord's going to look to see, hey, you know, who 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 um, has him on his mind and who doesn't, you know. Um, verse 10, it says, And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called upon him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou hast... Not without thy son, thine only son from me. So you see, man, again, because this was his beloved son, man, you know, pride and joy. And he was about to offer him up in a gruesome way. Again, just look into the ritual of a, a burnt offering. All right. Um, this is what Abraham was getting ready to do, you know. But nevertheless, um, he proved himself. All right. He displayed his his, his faith in Yahweh Bashem El Shai, man. You see. And uh, when you read on down in verse 13, it says, And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering unto the offering in the stead of his son. And because again, spiritual gems, because the time for the sacrificial land to be sacrificed, talking about Yahweh, that wasn't the time for it. All right. So again, the, the Lord. This is why, you know, the Lord set it up to where there would be a, a, a goat right there, a, a goat right there, right? Or excuse me, a ram, right? Because that wasn't the time for your house trying to be offered up. So again, just more spiritual gems. But nevertheless, um, again, um, showing that, hey, Abraham, um, a man of, of great faith, you know, he, he proved himself. He was tried out and he passed his test, passed his particular test. All right. And again, this is why. Uh, Abraham A, he, he, he's a, a friend of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, man. You see, this is what we got to, this is what we're being geared up to, man. Because, hey, like I said, I'm sure this is, this this is, this was tough for, 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 for Abraham, man. About to offer up his only begotten son, man. Here it is. The Lord told him that he would make a, a nation out of him, you know, um, through his, through his, through his loins, you know, so on and so forth. You know, here it is. You know, Abraham had Isaac at a, at a you know, at a, at a old age, so to say, 
you know, you know, the Lord told him all these things, right? Um, and here it is, um, the Lord telling him to to offer up his only begotten son, who he it was said that was, you know, um, all, you know, all the nations would be would be blessed, and you know, all these other things. So you can just imagine the emotion, the the emotion, um. Um, you could just imagine the emotion and the, and the thought process, all right? Because uh, the apostles, uh, the apostles say this all the time, and you know, um, when you're going through hell, man, it's not comfortable. You know, no one wants to go through hell, but hey, knowing that you know, for whatever reason, the Lord has us in this position, all right. And the best that we we, we can do, man, is just suck it up. We we, we got to deal with it. You know, we can't question you how about Shemuel Shai. You know, we just got to deal with it and just know that you know, um. That this is not going to be to our detriment, you know. Um, so, you know, these are things that we got to understand, man. It's not going to feel good. Whatever temptation befalls us, it's not going to feel good. But just know that, you know, hey, our te uh, faith is being tested. And, you know, this is what this is all about. This is an example of one of our forefathers, one of the patriarchs, their faith being tested. And they passed. All right. And if I'm not mistaken, I... Um, I'm not even going to put that out out there. That might be wrong information. So, um, so yeah, man. I'm going to go to this. Where is that? Uh, Galatians chapter uh, 3. Because you see, man, when you, when you display faith, it, it, it uh, counts towards you as righteousness. Galatians chapter 3, verse... Um, Verse 6, it says, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So you see, um, it was counted to towards him as righteousness. Whenever you display faith, man, that's very pleasing unto Yahweh Bashem El Shai. Because that's what he requires of us. Faith, our faith. You just got to trust and, trust and believe. Right? I'm going to jump down to um, verse 11. It says, Galatians 3 and 11 but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Because that's what the Lord requires. He requires faith. All right. Um, I'm going to go to this in the Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, which they call this like the, 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 the almost like the, the hall of fame, so to say. You know, because uh, I'm going to read. Verse 1 real quick, eleven Hebrews 11 and 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So, again, going into this hope, man, our expectation, being in Yahweh Bashem El Shah, that, you know, whatever the situation may arise, the Lord's going to come through. All right, our expectation is from, is in Him. Because we're going to be putting very uncertain situations in, it's not going to look good. You know, but this is where that faith is going to have to come in. Is The faith is going to have to kick in, right? Because even though it doesn't look good, right, we just got to know that the Lord is going to come through. Just like we did with Abraham at the last second, right? Because, hey, the scriptures say the righteous are scarcely be saved, you know? So, hey, just when you think that it might be the end all be all for you, then just like that, man, at the last second, the Lord can deliver, all right? You see, man, because, you know, you can walk to, uh, you could talk to talk, man. You know, but hey, when it comes down to it, um, a lot of people, man, are going to fold, you know, a lot of people are going to fold and even more, more so at the last second, man, you head might get put in a guillotine, right? You know, when, when the revelation 13, 16 and 17 comes around, you might, your head might get put in a guillotine, right? And, and right at the last second, man, you might give up all, you know, might, might've been in the truth 20 years and you might Throw that all away and just say, you know what? I'll take it, man. I just please don't chop my head off. You see, but um, yeah, man, just just stuff like that, man. You know, because we gotta endure until the end, even if even if it means certain death. You know, we gotta endure until the end, man. You know, even if because some of the the elect will be martyred for the truth. You know, um, but nevertheless, hey, you're gonna have brothers that are gonna die in uh, um, you know, believing. The uh, brother's going to die in the faith. Matter of fact, in this chapter, I'm going to jump down. Because, again, you know, it gives a list of, of, you know, a lot of our forefathers that displayed great faith, right? 
I'm going to jump down. I'm going to jump down. So you see, when you, like I said, when you go through this chapter, man, it says, by faith, you know, by faith, Moses did this. By faith, Mo uh, uh, Joseph did that, you know. I want to get this real quick. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 39. It says, and, and all these have obtained a good report through faith. Receive not the promise. God having provided some better thing for us that they would that they without us should not be made perfect. So you see, um, because you know, a, a lot of our forefathers, man, they they um even though the Lord uh, um told them that that you know they would uh like uh, uh, uh see the kingdom and um well not the kingdom, um the promised land, um which ultimately is going to be the kingdom, all right? Um, uh, a lot of our forefathers, man, they died not seeing the promised land. You know, like I said here, it said, uh, verse 39 again, it says, and these all having obtained a good report through faith received not the promise, all right? Because the Lord said, all, you know, all these things concerning the promise, promises and, you know, uh, certain things like that. Um, and, and again, a lot of our, uh, our forefathers, some of them, they died not, you know, um, actually seeing it. But it was not more so in those particular lifetimes that they would receive it. But nevertheless, they still believed, you see. They still had faith, you see. You know, because, you know, Abraham and, and Moses, you know, and, you know, all, you know, all the, the, the men of old men, um, you know, they're going to be in, in, in the kingdom. They're going to come back in the kingdom, all right. They are part of the elect, so they're going to be in the kingdom. But you see, in their specific life, those specific lifetimes... Like I said, the Lord said these certain things for these certain uh, said certain things that um, didn't necessarily happen in those lifetimes. But nevertheless, um, they still they still believed. They still had faith. You see, which I mean, it, it takes a lot, man, because, hey, like I said, if 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 we were in Abraham's position, nine point nine times out of ten, we wouldn't be able to, to, to follow through with it. You know, we wouldn't be able to go through with it. You know, that's that's a hard thing, man. You know, but hey, nevertheless, the Lord didn't come through at the last second. Abraham, you bet your top dollar he would have followed through with it, you know, because one thing, dealing with the, the, the faith of Abraham, all right, a man of great faith. Um, I'm going to jump up. I'm going to jump up to verse eight. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should of which he should after receive for an inheritance obeyed and he went out not knowing whether he went so hey again because abraham he moved off of pure faith he didn't you know the lord told him to go this this direction and that's where he went all right you know faith all right um in obedience like i said you know Abraham, there's no count. He questioned the Lord. He was hesitant. No, I mean, he, he got up and he, he went. He obeyed. You see? Um, and this place, particular place, if I'm not mistaken, like I said, Abraham, he, he didn't know about it. You know, he just he just, he just just went off of faith because the Lord said so. You know? Verse 9, it says, By faith he sojourned in the land. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Because again, Abraham and Sarah, they were at an old age. You know, um, it's like to, you know, put it in uh, today's perspective, you know, when you when you see a woman, she she's like in her fifties, um, 
pregnant, that's, that's, you know, cause typically around late thirties, forties, you know, that's typically women when, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of the past time for women to, to be having babies. So let's say you got a woman, she's in her forties and fifties and she's pregnant. That's almost, you know, that's, that's, that's unheard of. You see, they, they're kind of past their prime or past that stage of, you know, being able to have babies. So again, Sarah, she was at that age, that stage to where she couldn't really, you know, bear children. But nevertheless, all things are possible through Yahweh Basham Shai. You see, and again, just to show you the, the, the man of faith that Abraham was, because again, they knew that they were old, they were at old age, right? And like I said earlier, you know, yeah, uh, the, the Yahweh Basham Shai was telling them that, you know, hey, I'm going I'm to make a great nation out of you, all right? I'm, I'm you know, you're going to be a father of many nations, so on and so forth. The Lord was telling them all these things, and, and Abraham was like, you know, well, you know, how, how, how is this possible where, you know, I, I'm, you know, Sarah, she can't, she can't have kids, you know, she, and it's not a thing of him questioning the Lord, like, you know, like he was doubting the Lord, you know, um, it wasn't in that sense, you know, but, um, yeah, man, nevertheless, um, again, um, the Lord said these things and Abraham, um, he, he believed somehow, some way. You know, he had faith that it was going to come to pass. Verse 12, it says, Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the, by the seashore innumerable. So again, the Lord told Abraham he was going to have so, so many children, man, this is going to be like the sand of the sea and the, and the stars of heaven, stuff like that, you know. Um... Um, and again, you can just imagine that thought going through Abraham, uh, going through Abraham's head when he was told to sacrifice his only begotten son, you know, how are these things going to come to pass if, you know, I don't have seed, you know, you can just, just, just imagine, man, you know, if I have to kill off my only son, how am I going to, you know, be the father of, you know, many nations and all these other things. You can just imagine, man, you know, but nevertheless, again. Because of Abraham, he believed, he had faith. Um, verse 13, it says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that ye seek a country. Um, I'm going to jump down to verse 17. It says, By faith, Abraham when he was tried, because again, he was tried, as it said in uh, Genesis 22, the Lord tempted him. You know, he was being tested, right? It said, offered up, sac offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Again, because another spiritual gem, so to say, because uh, Yahweh Shah, he's the only begotten of, of Yahweh, right? He was the only begotten of Abraham. It said, of whom it was said that and Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. So, um, one thing about Abraham and his faith, it just said here, all right, Abraham believed that he could raise Isaac back up. Basically, reincarnation, bring him back. I'm going to read that again. It said, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead. So, Abraham believed that the Lord would raise him back up. He will see him again. You know, just like when you read about Job, how Job lost his, his Job lost his children, man. Right. Um, but when you read at the end and Job received all the blessings, right. Matter of fact, I'll go there real quick. And this is why, you know, we don't trip for the most part. All right. We don't, we don't for the most part trip about death. Cause you know, when we lose loved ones on the side, man, we believe just like our forefather Abraham believed, we believe we're going to see him again. You know, we we might lose brothers, sisters, fathers, grandmothers, whatever the case may be, man. Close relatives and close loved ones. All right. No one understand that. Hey, we're going to see him again. So it's not, a, you know, I'm not going to say it's not a big deal. But, you know, just know that pretty much, man, they're straight, man. They're, they're good. All right. Because the scriptures tell you, even the wicked, when they die, their spirit goes back to the heavenly father. The, the spiritual realm, man, they're at rest. Even the wicked are at rest. So, you know, um, hey. When you people die and whatnot, man, they're good. Just know that they're good, man. They're chilling. They're at rest, you know. So don't worry about it, man. You're going to see him again. 
So I'm going to read this. Job chapter 42. So again, because this is when Job, he lost everything, but then he got it back double. Right? And that includes his children. So Job chapter 42, verse 16. It said, After this lived Job 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. And what does the scripture say? We come back to every three to four generations. So just let you know that, hey, Job, the, the, the children that he's lost, they came back four generations later. He, Job got to see his kids again. You see? So that's what Abraham, again, Abraham, he knew that, hey, the Lord would bring him back. He had faith that the Lord would bring him back, man. No problem. You know, it's, that's light work for the How about Shemel Shai, man? You know? So I'm going back to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. One more time. Hebrews 11, verse 19, and counting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead and from whence also he received him in a figure. So Abraham had faith and he believed that Yahweh Bashim Shai would bring his son back. If he had to actually go through with the sacrifice, the Lord would bring him back. No problem. So you see, Abraham, again, man, just, just uh, you know, a uh, uh, great man of faith, you know, um, displayed man, you know. And like I said, Abraham, he's counted as a friend of Yahweh Shem El Shai. We want that, man. We want that same title, man. You know, we want to be considered friends of, of Yahweh Shem El Shai, man. You know, but um, also one more thing. It's in this chapter because, like I said, the Lord, hey, he requires faith. That This is something. It's a must. All right. Um. Uh, Hebrews 11 and 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. So you got it. You, there's, no, there's no way around this, man. You have, to, you have to have faith. You must believe that he is, that he is, man. I am that I am. You have to believe that about Yahweh Bashim al man. All right? He can do all these things, man. You know, you, you have to believe this. It, it all goes back to faith. How do we know? Because, you know, we don't have physical proof and, you know, things of that nature. And that's why, you know, a lot of Jake, man, Jake, they need physical proof. They got, they actually have to see and, you know, how do y'all know and blah, blah, blah. Listen, all right, at the end of the day, we have faith. All right, we believe. All right. So that's how we know. Because we believe it, man. We have faith in it. It says, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you see, man, all right, it is impossible to please Yahweh Bashim El Shai without displaying faith. So that's why the Lord puts us in these situations and different circumstances to increase our faith. Because, A, that mustard, it starts off, the, 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 the um, faith, excuse me, faith starts out as a mustard seed, all right, but it grows, man. It grows into, you know, uh, something, you know, beyond what we could have, what, what we could imagine, you know. So, yeah, man, again, because, you know, one thing we ought to be praying that um, the Lord, you know, he gives us the spirit, man. We ought to be praying that we ought to be praying for the, 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 the spirit that's on these, 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 these great men of old, like Abraham, Moses, you know, so on and so forth, man. All the men of old, man, we ought to be praying for that same spirit, man, the Maccabees, Judas Maccabees and all these other men, right? Praying that the Lord puts those, that those, 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 those same spirits on us, man. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you know. We ought to be praying for that same spirit, man. That same faith, that same integrity, all that, man. We ought to be praying for this stuff, you know. Because, hey, uh, again, man, the Lord didn't, doesn't have these stories set up for a reason. These different events didn't happen for a reason, all right. They were written for us to learn from more so now in this time that we're in. All right, because, hey, at the end of the day, all we're going to have is our faith in Yahweh Bashim El Shai, man. We're literally just going to, you know, have to walk by faith and not by sight, man, because, hey, when it gets bad out here, that's all we're going to have is our faith. You know, it, it, it should just become, you know, second nature. You know, just whenever you put in the jam, just call out the Yahweh Bashim El Shai and you just know that he's going to do something, man. He's going to work it out, man. You know, 
That's what the Lord is bidding us up to. That, that big test, man, to where we're going to have to really prove ourselves and, and, you know, prove our faith, man. You know, so this is what it's all about, man. But, you know, I just wanted to touch on this, you know, um, one of many examples, man. Again, this is the stock that we come from, man. You know, so we, you know, take from this, man. You know, this is this is our heritage. This is this is our book, man. This this is this is about us and it's for us. You know, so hopefully this was edifying. Giving all praises to Yahweh Bashimal Shai, the honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Yahweh Bashimal Shai brought a thumb to the hopefully elect. Lord's willing to next time. Shalom.